Hey guys, we are at Token 249. Uh, this is our second interview of the day. We're here with Ron from Inference Labs. Guys, we've been working with Inference for uh, quite some time now and you know we really like what they're doing. Again, the topic of conversation is today in AI. Inference Labs brings trusted verification on AI and within the blockchain space. So I think Ron, in terms of like what you guys are building has been pretty substantial in the past few months. So I'd love for you to tell the audience in general what you guys have been doing and what has been the roadmap, you know, during this year in 2025. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, for, for us to kind of dig in there, um, we, we should come, come up with like a little bit of context and, you mm. know, the, the Genesis story a yeah. little bit, um, you know, how we kind of got here just um, to kind of, because the, the whole idea of verification is, is somewhat abstract and, um, it's it's interesting because Colin myself we we come from a, a previous exit. Uh, we've actually been working together a little over ten years, and mm -hmm. and that exit actually was in civil aviation. Um, and uh, around 2018, part of the feature set actually was um, computer vision and AI. And 2018, nobody was talking about ChatGPT. <laughs> we had to really build like the whole stack. And kind of going through that whole process, um, that 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 mission critical enterprise environment um, for you know uh, navigating and providing aircraft guidance, that that really taught us a lot about about AI and um, some of the challenges, um, product market fit, and how that works. So um, that that's that's essentially how we kind of arrived at that, that idea and concept of. of um, AI verification. Amazing. Yeah. Can you tell us more about certain of the applications of Inference Labs, like, you know, case studies that is applicable to currently what you guys are doing? Yeah. Um, so I, I, it's very broad. Mm. And, and I think it, it is part of that, that journey that we had on that exit and that learning, which we kind of discovered a few things. Um, so, so one, it was hugely successful. It rolled out to about 60 airports around the world. And I, I had mentioned we're kind of like developing um, these AI models as we're going because it doesn't exist, right? You, you couldn't go to Kaggle at that time to download a data set for, for airplanes. We had to train it all. Mm -hmm. And as we kind of rolled out, um, you know, like typical software, we would actually say, hey, you know, like uh, we, we, we have the latest and greatest. Do you want to roll this out? And what was interesting was um, the answer was not always yes. Um, it was actually no, um, because we'd actually have to go through months and months of site acceptance uh, testing to ensure that the predictions were operating correctly. Um, so it, it is a, like verification, I think, is, is very broad in terms of its use cases. Um, and it applies to all different sectors, you know, transportation, medical, healthcare, um, government, enterprise and, and whatnot. So. Um, lots of specific use cases, but very generalized, yeah. So, in terms of like what you just mentioned, there are so many use cases in, in, in you know, real world use cases in general. Let's talk about the infrastructure, right? You guys use BitTensor um, as the back end of Omron. Uses a ZK proof to verify, obviously, the AI app that's around that. How is that scalable in, yeah. in, in the long term um, for all those use cases you just mentioned? That, that, that's that's a, a great question. Um, so BitTensor, I, I, I think as a network, um, it has a really elegant incentive design structure around it. Uh, we, we launched Omron about a year ago. Um, it was it was purely out of like an experimentation. How, how do we kind of solve for um, what you astutely identify as, as like a scale problem? Because um, AI uh, verification actually is very computationally expensive. Mm. Um, you know, quite possibly it orders of magnitude more than the actual AI inference itself. And when we launched Omron, um, the, the, the dis decision was um, to kind of like figure out how do we create this in incentive design for that computation and also how do we um, incentivize um, the, the reduction of the proof times. Uh, so when I say it's computationally expensive, sometimes the, the, the proof could um, take up to 24 seconds. So when we initially launched, it was a very high level, time, uh, sorry, very uh, low level, simple time series prediction model, um, an LSTM model. And the proving times when we initially launched was like 20, 24 seconds. 
And we kind of witnessed the miners go ahead and, and scale up their infrastructure vertically. Uh, they, they then you know, scaled it out horizontally, uh, introduced like load balancing, and then um, all the way to implementing GPU optimizations. As well as that, um, we, we actually found a miner that um, did their own Halo 2 custom implementation onto an FPGA. Uh, so for those that don't know what an FPGA is, uh, you can kind of think of it as like, you know, early Bitcoin days, mm -hmm. people could actually uh, mine Bitcoin with just mm -hmm. a GPU, but then all of a sudden ASICs came along, which kind of blew mm -hmm. um, those mi like miners out of the water. Uh, you can kind of think of like an FPGA somewhat similar to, to that. So, um, so they got the proof time down to four seconds. So it, it makes a fantastic engine on that, that scaling problem that you were talking about. So is this, the, if you had to say three reasons why you, you'd use this compared to Ethereum, what would be those three main reasons? Interesting. It's actually not either or. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so we, we, we actually are on um, BitTensor, um, but as well as that, we are going to be, um, we're, we're on testnet on Eigenlayer. So okay. um, there will be a, a separate network called Certain yep. um, that is uh, launched basically on Ethereum um, initially, mm. and uh, the economic security is going to be provided by Eigenlayer there. So how we kind of have that mental model between the two, like why, why have both? Um, we kind of look at BitTensor, it is very much open source, mm -hmm. open participation. Mm -hmm. um, we don't look at it as Semnet 2 is always going to be inference labs. Um, what we want to do is accelerate the development of ZKML or AI verification technologies explore different ways to distribute different work in terms of verification um, and invite miners to help with that proof efficiency. So those models inherently, because it is open participation, it is all open source, and um, thus um, those particular miners would have access to those AI models. Now, for, for us in terms of our mental model, I see there's probably billions being sidelined right now um, you know, for that Web3, think about it, like all the investment right now is going purely into uh, artificial intelligence, like Web2, anybody is in software development, they're working on something um, related to, to AI. Um, and when you have those like enterprise companies, and we come from kind of like some enterprise, um, we, we, we actually see exactly that. It's like they're, they're pouring millions of dollars, billions of dollars into training and mm -hmm. hours of manpower. They want to actually protect it with some sort of like IP. So this other network, the Lens, um, what we offer with ZKML is the ability to not only be able to verify AI, but we're also um, able to kind of like remove those trust assumptions while also providing some privacy protections on those AI models themselves. So it's a, a, a slight form of IP protection. And I think that is one reason why I think a lot of uh, proprietary AI models is being sidelined right now. They'd rather just you know deploy it centrally, they can kind of manage it, um, but unfortunately there's massive trust assumptions and silos behind that. Related to that point, if verifiable AI goes mainstream, as you predicted, how would that change the internet? Yes, um, so I, I think for AI, like verifiable AI, it's it's going to be mainstream. It's it's not if, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a matter of when. Um, and the reason why I actually kind of see this and the direction that this is heading in um, is, is that I think fundamentally a lot of like the edge of SaaS products um, you know, the past 20 years, if you were like a startup raising with a VC, the, the biggest questions are, you know, what's your differentiator? What's your defensibility? What's your moat? And for the past 20 years, like the, the kind of status quo is like customer lock-in, data lock-in, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I think, you know, with um, like Spotify, for instance, I use Spotify. Uh, sure, there's a lot of other platforms out there. It's not like Spotify gives me any better service. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't leave is because I, my playlist is there. Yeah. And it's like a pain in the butt. Like I, yeah. I'm sure there's tools out there for me to migrate, yeah, yeah. but I just couldn't be bothered, right? Yeah. 
my thesis is that all of that's going to be erased, right? Because, yeah, yeah. because it's like, then you're having a conversation with your intent. Mm -hmm. And I think um, with that intent, an AI agent's just going to basically go and fulfill that request for you. Um, so I, I think that's, you know, where we're heading with this like mainstream AI. Um, and primarily it's, I think the, the lens of the, the market size is going to be essentially N equals one. It's, it's going to be highly customized AI models for an, an individual. How does a developer use your technology? Uh, so in terms of developers right now, um, we're in production on BitTensor. So yeah. uh, you can participate as a miner. The incentive design's already there. You, you're, there's an incentive mechanism. If you're high performing as, as a miner, the, the rewards are actually quite, quite good, quite fr fruitful. Um, BitTensor is, is great for that. Uh, we are also um, a, on testnet on Eigenlayer. Uh, so I would say, you know, check out our docs, uh, check out our GitHub repos. Uh, those are those are great great ways to participate now. Um, we have some really exciting stuff coming up. So mm -hmm. it, it actually will be uh, a lot more broad in terms of participation. You mm -hmm. don't have to be just a developer. And I think that that aspect is is very important. What are some of the rewards that you offer developers at the moment? I it's. Primarily right now through like Detail, the alpha token that's available there. Yeah. Um, for certain network, uh, the, it's, it's pre-token, mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we don't have a, a token there. Um, but the, the rewards are already baked into the BitTensor network. Okay, amazing, perfect. Well, Ron, thank you so much for the interview today. Yeah, you're um, I, I feel that you know, what you guys are building is going to be, the, the total addressable market is big enough for, for an application like this. So I do thank you so much for coming today explain what you guys are building, all the aspects and case studies and use cases of everything you guys have built. Um, hopefully the developers know where to find the docs online and you'll be building on appearance. So yeah, have a great token and thank you so much for your time today. Great, great. thanks. Um, you know, nice. your subject matter knowledge is, is great. Um, very astute questions, so thanks for having me. Thank you. All right.